We'll start with the broadcast section with no embargo, followed by an embargoed <coughs> section for 10.30 p.m. tonight. No live tweeting during the broadcast section and use a microphone provided. Michael. Go ahead. Good, Michael. Um, firstly, the Premier League clubs have uh, are voted in favour of semi-automated offside technology for next season. Uh, are you in favour of that decision? Yeah, I, 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 mean, I don't know a lot about it, but if it means they make decisions quicker and it's clearer, um, yeah, all for it. Um, Newcastle tomorrow is a big game, St James is. Um, we've seen another club, Everton, with, with more points deductions this week and PSR's been on the agenda. Is it difficult in terms of a club who have got a lot of wealth in terms of ownership, but obviously PSR is going to be looked at and, and potentially changed? Wh wh where do you stand on it I exactly? Because in terms of unlimited wealth, but we need some kind of ruling, don't we? We're going down this rabbit hole again, are we? Um, we did this last week. Uh, again, it's, you know, um, smart heads of me in this space are locked in rooms making these decisions. I said last week, I think there's always got to be some sort of regulation around a safety net for, for clubs to make sure they don't overspend for their own good and, and also a competitive balance uh, within that. Um, but I've always felt not at the expense of you know, um, the quality that we're, we're trying to produce in, in the best league in the world. So, um, so again, I think from my perspective, I'll leave that to the guys who probably know better. At the end of the game last week at Forest, I noticed you were quick to, to try and look for, for Pierre-Emile Hoybier. He, he made quite an impression off the bench um, on Sunday. We, we, how impressed were you with him? And he's obviously talked about potentially his future in, in January, but... Just more on that, you sort of looked to seek him out. Did he do exactly what you were looking for at half-time? Yeah, no, he was him and, and Roddy was good. I try and get to all the players uh, after the game. Some of them get off quicker than others, so I've got to chase them down the tunnel. But, um, yeah, no, I thought, I, I think I said after the game, I thought Pierre and Roddy come on, coming on at half-time really helped us last week. It was a game that kind of needed something a little bit different than what we had. I thought... Biss and, and Pape did well enough in the first half and, and worked really hard. But, you know, I thought for, for where the game was at and the way sort of Forrest was setting up, um, having Pierre and Rodri in there with their experience and, you know, Pierre particularly with his passing range, I thought we could really sort of use it to to sort of start and, and start working and particularly switching the flanks and, and it worked well. And, well, Pierre's been good. Um, you know, he hasn't started as many games probably as he'd like. Um, but whenever we've needed him, he's done a good job for us. And um, I think from our perspective, we're in a good place at the moment where we have a squad that I can make these changes, you know, within games or between games. That's all right. Thank you. So. Hi, Ange. Um, it's always difficult to travel to Newcastle, 12.30 on a Saturday. And we saw the game last season where Spurs were, I think, 5-0 down after 21 minutes. Are you expecting a, a tough challenge once again tomorrow? And have you watched that? Game back, maybe? Uh, no, I haven't. Um, and because there's no reason to for me. Um, and yeah, it'll be a tough game. I mean, I don't think the 12.30 kickoff, I mean, we're, we're leaving today, so I don't think there's anything around that. So we'll have good preparation for it. And it's a tough game. It's, you know, they're, they're, they're obviously, um, you know, they're going through a tough time themselves in terms of injuries, uh, <coughs> like most clubs this year, but probably they've been, you know, hurt probably for a more prolonged period. Um, but, you know, when I watch them, uh, and particularly at home, they're still a very, very good side. Uh, I think the crowd gives them a lot of energy, irrespective of who they put out there. And the games, irrespective of who they play against, tend to be <coughs> fairly high tempo because of the energy in the stadium. So we're going to have to match that energy tomorrow. I mean, it's the way we like to play our football as well. So hopefully, um, you know, by, by bringing our own energy to it, we can, you know, we can sort of overcome the challenge. Uh, it's going to be a tough one. James Madison said it in an interview this week that you're trying to make them look at the bigger picture, more, more the long term. Can you tell us a bit more about how you see that bigger picture? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not sure what he was referencing about, but you know, for me, it's just, as I've always said, it's about continual growth. It's about not sort of being, you know, settling for, for kind of where we're at at the moment. Um, you know, we've had a, a decent season. We've had improvements in a lot of areas, but we know we've still got a long way to go. And... Uh, you know, it's about constantly reinforcing the players that, you know, and the staff that, you know, we, 
we should really still be focusing on growth and how we can be better rather than sort of where we are at the moment. And, um, you know, don't, never lose sight of the fact that ultimately our ambition is to bring success to the football club and, you know, we're, we're not in that space yet. You've got a tough run of games coming up, probably the toughest for any team in the Premier League. How excited are you as a manager going into those games? I think they're all tough. Uh, I'd be very surprised if anyone has an easy game um, we certainly didn't think it was easy against Forest, who are fighting for their lives, or or Luton, or um, you know West Ham. Um, I think every game. I think Saturday, and we've got you know seven tough games to go. But I think every team's got tough games because I think just about every club's got something to play for. And uh, you know, um, I don't think it's about ladder positions right now. It's about knowing that you're going into a game on the weekend with uh, against an opponent who'll be. Uh, yeah, determined to, to gain something for themselves and we've got to be ready for that. Thank you. Jack, thanks. Hi, Ange. <coughs> Last season, Newcastle finished 11 points ahead of Tottenham. This season, you're currently 13 points ahead of Newcastle. Does that underline your point about how Champions League qualification isn't necessarily the be-all and end-all for a football club? Well, I mean, I, I guess I gave that as an example of, yeah, mm. one of the reasons why I don't think it's it should be a kind of you know, end point or, or some some avenue that you think will get you to to kind of be um, su- successful and sustained for a sustained period, just because you have achieved that. And uh, and certainly there's a you know there's a cautionary cautionary tale there that you know getting into Champions League also means greater demands demands on players, demands on the squad, um, and you have to be geared up for it, or else it can it can affect all parts of of your season. So. Um, you know, and I think it's been tough on Newcastle um, this year because I think they were probably, you know, their progress last year was fantastic. Um, the reward for that was Champions League football, but you know, this year, um, for whatever reason, you know, it's 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 made a really challenging season on all fronts for them with the amount of sort of attrition they've had through the squad. Have you learned anything from how Newcastle have gone about it this year? No, because I, I don't think that's the way you learn. I think you learn from your own sort of journey and, and understanding of every club's unique, every sort of approach is different. Um, you've got to already have sort of a, a set idea in your own mind and, uh, about how you need to set up and, and what you need for your, for your own growth. Um, you're obviously aware of what other you know, clubs and, and other managers or people go through, but ultimately, um, yeah, I think from my perspective anyway, I've, what I've experienced in my career is that everything's a little bit unique and you never really know every all the details about somebody else's kind of trajectory. And, um, you know, sometimes, you know, there are some false lessons that lie in there that seem quite obvious, but when you peel it back, actually, you know, not really a good reference point for yourself. OK, pass to Ali, please. <coughs> Hi, Andrew. Uh, just check team news. Is Richardson still out? Yeah, he'll miss this week. Um, he's close, but with the weekend off next week, we just feel, you know, obviously the last sort of two rounds are, are pretty stacked with games for us and uh, <clears throat> having him ready for that, I think, is more important. So, uh, But he's, he's progressing well. Um, got stuck down a bit of a rabbit hole myself yesterday. I was going into the how your squad will look this summer in terms of loan players coming back, homegrown requirements, foreign players, things like that. And I think you're going to have about 35 upwards of players in your first team squad. Is that something you have to tackle with the recruitment team before you can even start thinking about who comes in? Well, that's a, again, that's an ongoing process. I think it was similar last year when I took over. Um, you know, it's it's just part of the process of planning. I think you know, the difference from last year is that we're well into that sort of planning, whereas you know last year we kind of had to do it on the run a little bit because obviously I came in um, you know post the season and. You know, we had a big squad then and we had, to, we had a lot of decisions to make about <coughs> players who were coming back from loan, players who needed to go out on loan, players we needed to bring in and move out. So um, I think this year we're, we're sort of a lot more you know, sort of calm in our approach because we've been working on it for quite a while, you know, Johan and, and the people in the football department. One thing I noticed within it, um, there's a lack of kind of club trained senior players in your squad at the moment. And if you get European football, not saying that's a target, but if you get European football, um, Oliver Skip would be one of those few club-trained players. I think it's only like three or four. Obviously, he needs regular football, hasn't played much, hasn't been getting in squads. Does, does that make it kind of difficult for him to, if he did want to maybe move on loan or it, or it means you have to keep him next season regardless? 
no, um, you know, again, we're, we're quite we're quite comfortable in that situation as well. Every players, you know, decisions about individual players, um, you know, will all be made in the context of what's you know good for the club and what's good for the player, and, and hopefully there's some sort of alignment there. Sometimes there isn't, um, but um, from our perspective, again, we're, we're comfortable that you know with the squad we have that we'll make decisions that are going to be sort of beneficial for us uh, in terms of our growth and. Uh, yeah, but a lot of those individual things, individual player decisions won't happen until you know, post-season. OK, we're finishing the section with George at the back, please. <coughs> Hi, Ange. Um, I just wanted to go back to the previous Newcastle game. and You'd obviously had a really good start to the season, but that was the time when you had the suspensions and injuries. Um, I think you'd lost four out of five going into that, even though performances had been good. How significant did that 4-1 win feel at the time, or even now? Um, yeah, look, I think it was it was important in the context of, like you said, the results. Uh, obviously, you don't want to go through too long a spell where you're not picking up um, you know, wins, because obviously that affects kind of the the course of your season um, but you know as you said I thought our performances prior to that were still pretty strong um, we obviously weren't getting over the line for one reason or another but um, I thought on that day we, we, we played really well we were really um, aggressive I think our front third play was probably you know the area that we we kind of got most joy out of on the day and um, yeah it was a pleasing result especially at home because we dropped a couple of games at home we probably shouldn't have because our performances were good enough but we just you know, we just lacked a bit of cutting edge in the front third and made some mistakes defensively. So, I guess you know, from the results point of view, it was uh, <clears throat> it was important. But from a performance or some sort of extra significance, no more than any other game. And um, you got the two week break after this match. <coughs> Is there any kind of plans to arrange a behind closed door friendly, or do you kind of feel like it will just be a normal two weeks of training? Um, yeah, we'll. we'll We'll probably just keep it in house. Um, you know, we'll train right through. We, we kind of feel that we get sort of better output when when we kind of use the group and, and push the group as a whole. So um, yeah, at, at this stage, the plan is to train through and uh, sort of get ready for for the running. And then um, just finally, away from the men's team, the women's team have got a really big game on Sunday. Um, you, you watched them, didn't you, back in December? I mean. How helpful are you and, and everyone at the club that they can get over the line and make the final FA Cup final? Yeah, um, you know, I think Rob and the girls have, have been outstanding this year. Again, you have to remember, you know, they had disappointingly year last year. Rob's come in and he's he's changed a lot of things and, and in terms of their football. And uh, but I can see that they're building, you know, some real belief. And um, look, it's a, it's a semi-final of a cup, you know, and it's great that it's at the stadium. I'm sure the girls will get plenty of support and. Um, you know, they've, they've had a great deal of belief to get to this point. You need that for a cup run, and uh, hopefully that uh, you know that comes out again on the on, on the weekend, and, and they get to a final, which would be great for them, but great for our club. Okay, we'll end the broadcast section there, and move on to the embargoed section. Um, Um, no, I didn't. Uh, after working with him, obviously during the preseason, I thought he, both him and Emmy. I mean, I think all, all of our fullbacks. Are, you know, obviously, you know, we play that role a little bit differently. So there's sort of sort of some different characteristics you look for. And I thought with the lads we had here, I thought there was one area of the pitch that we had some some really good sort of reinforcements in. But no, I, I really, you know, I really enjoyed <coughs> working with Pedro right from the start. He's got great energy. He's very, very good technically. Um, you know he's really eager to learn. You know he's done a lot of work on his defensive work with um, with Wellesley and 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 the defensive unit as a group. And I think he's benefited from that. And and he's sort of grown into it. Um, and I still think there's a lot more growth in him because, you know, I, th I think he's tackling the defensive side of his job, which probably was the one thing that maybe people had some scepticism around. Obviously, when you play as a wing back, you don't need to defend, particularly in a one-on-one -on -one situation. But I think he's He's been outstanding this year, you know, dealing with you know some pretty good wingers in this league. Um, you know, rarely has been has he been sort of left short on that, and uh, and he's wanting to learn. So no, I mean, I 
I think there's a lot more in him and, um, you know, really pleased that, you know, he's kind of embraced um, the way we play our football. And another player, you know, <coughs> ultimately, Mr. James Butler, how does Sarah, he's taken off 15, 5 minutes after 20 odd minutes. Um, can you just talk about the kind of player you found in, in pre-season and, and kind of how you see his development potential? Yeah, um, again, Pape, um, you know, just just a super energy about him you know every day he trains and you know trains with a smile on his face but he works damn hard and he's a really I think he's a really exciting footballer you know he, he, he he's one of these midfielders who you need these days who are very dynamic covers the ground really well uh, defensively offensively um, you know gets into the box he scored a couple of goals for us this year he's you know his technical ability is, is strong and you know, he's a good ball carrier as well, and, and he's still young. I feel that he's another one that's just so much more growth in um, from all aspects. And I just really like his his kind of just general demeanour. I think, you know, he, he feels like he's kind of been blessed to have this opportunity and he's going to make everything, you know, do everything to, to, to make the most out of it. And um, it's great to have him as part of the group. He's obviously, you know, He's, he's very popular within the group because of his just his nature, you know. And um, but he's a hell of a footballer. I've, I've got a lot of time for Papa, and I think again he's another one where there's just a lot of growth there, you know, from what I see. Yeah, and can I just check? Has he been kind of impacted by the passing from Ramadan? Yeah, look, it's always it's always a bit of a challenge for for, for the, the players, but you know they you know their beliefs that you know they feel very strongly about, and we try and support them in the best way we can, and. Um, you know he's 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 gone about his you know his football still diligently and um, you know gone through what he needs to go through and um, yeah now it's 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 sort of it's over and um, I'm sure for him it'll it'll sort of allow him now to get back to the levels he needs to get to. Tom. <coughs> No, I don't think so. I think I said after the game that I think we've been working with Pedro and, and, and Destiny in particular. I think they're still getting into some great areas. You know, probably haven't had the output. But I think, uh, you know, I think I've been consistent saying all year in our front third, you know, a lot of our players still, you know, still a long way to go in terms of where we want to be. Um, but no, I still think, I mean, Pedro scored last week. I think, um, you know, Destiny was in the box when he scored, so you know we. I still think it's a, you know, it's still an effective sort of way for us to 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 get through opposition teams with the quality those two players have. Different qualities in terms of the way they they kind of get into those attacking thirds, but um, no, it's just stuff we we we're working on with them constantly, and again we're seeing some improvement. something you have to ask Eric I mean I, I don't know what you mean by tactical work I think all we do is work on everything's geared around how we're going to play our football so for me that by extension is tactical work so whether that's on us whether that's on the, the opposition um, in fact I'd probably say we don't do anything apart from tactical work that's all we do every day if we're working on our fitness it's still trying to play our football so but I, I'm not sure. I haven't seen the interview, so I'm not sure what he's referencing. But yeah, you know, if you're talking about, you know, do we sort of do training where we're we're kind of standing around and and, and working on how we're going to stop an opposition, how we're going to break down? No, I don't do that. But I don't think that's the only kind of tactical work that exists. There's other kind of tactical work. But I think anyone who trains with us will tell you that all we do is train the way we play. So. If, I mean, maybe that's not tactical work, I don't know. It's, it's not for me to answer. Uh, and just finally, um, Harry Kane left in the summer. Um, 
decided we have not to delete the clause in the project we were embarking on with, with you of making winning trophies at Bayern Munich. Obviously, it's still in the Champions League. There's a chance that we could still do it, but there's also a chance that we won. There's been a little bit of schadenfreude, perhaps, amongst Spurs fans and fans of the wider fan base about, uh, about that not potentially happening. Do you think if he doesn't win any trophies, it's, it's, it's sort of a fair comment not to... No, I don't think that's fair because I, I uh, and I, I'm not going to speak for Harry for God's sake, but I don't think that's the only reason he left. I, I think he was pretty clear that he wanted a different experience, and I think there's nothing wrong with that. I've, that's been my whole career. He was at one club for a very long time. He was at a point where he either makes a decision to become stay at one club man, which is which is fair enough, or he can experience something different as a footballer. Um, Maybe as a person, I don't know. Again, it's questions for him. So I, I don't get this as just a notion that he just moved just to win things. I don't think if he had stayed here, he didn't think he was going to win things. So I just think you know he wanted a different experience, and he's getting that. You know, and I'm sure you know he'll he'll you know at the end of his career, you know, if, if you know that was his reasoning behind it, I think he'll he'll find that you know he, he does. It gives you you know a, a real broad experience about what football's about, what life's about. So, yeah, I don't think that's 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 fair on him. But ultimately, all these decisions you make <clears throat> about your personal career, you know, I know every decision I've made in my career, you know, it's very hard for other people sometimes to understand because they're not living my life, you know, they're not with my family, they're not with the people around me to, to know why you come to these decisions. So, And they're very rarely around too many simplistic things, you know, most of the time, you know, there's a whole range of factors you, you kind of put into it. Kieran. Uh, um, I'll just ask about uh, Van de Ven, because four years ago, he was in the, the second division, and now he's clearly holding his own in the Premier League. He's only 22. Where do you see, where's his potential? How much better can he actually get? Don't know, and not interested in, in sort of putting a limit on that because, um, as you said four years ago, you know, if somebody maybe said to him one day, you know, your goal should be to play in the Premier League, well, he's done it at 22, then there's a potential there for him to sort of say, oh, well, I've done. So I think with all these things, you never put limits on it. Uh, but, yeah, he's, look, he's done, he's done brilliantly and, and the growth in again in him is another one. I mean, that's the exciting thing for me with this group is that we've got a real core that I just think there's still so much growth in them because invariably it's their, either their first season in the Premier League or they're still young in age and, um, and you know, they've adapted so well and, and, they're, and they're at a big club where there still are expectations so it's not like they're going to fly under the radar by, you know, doing two or three years and then moving to a big club. You know, they're, they're under the spotlight straight away, whether that's... You know, Vic and Goal or, or Mickey or Brennan or the, you know, Destiny, Pape, these guys who we brought in, um, you know, kind of this year. Um, and, you know, Mickey falls, but, and again, the beauty of it is he just wants more. And as I said during the week, you know, it's up to us to, to make sure that we don't stunt his growth by putting a limit on, you know, how good he can be. Um, so, um, look, he's, he's, He's been fantastic for us this year and he's continuing to grow and, and where that takes him, um, you know, hopefully it's beyond whatever he has in his mind or anyone else has in their mind. Is that something special about this group, sort of maturity beyond the edge? Because with Chelsea, they've signed a lot of young players and it's mm. not really worked for them yet. Yeah, and it's not easy, um, particularly when you're talking about, you know, the toughest competition you know, in the world, club competition, so... So, you know, I have been pleased with that, with the way that a lot of the guys have just really accepted the challenge of, you know, playing for the club and, and, and you know, sort of challenging them to play in a certain way that's going to expose them in many respects, but them not shying away from that. Because the way we played, that again, you know, whether it's Mickey or Vic or <coughs> all those guys I mentioned, um, you know, it kind of puts them right out there in terms of, you know, they have to sometimes defend without any cover or attack without any support or, or just do things that are going to be a real challenge for them and they've embraced that and um, 
I said that's the exciting bit for me that that you know that, that also the responsibility I have is that you know there's there's a good core in there that have still got so much more that they can give and uh, at the same time they've they've already sort of acquitted themselves really well. Nah, nah. I, 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 look, I, I probably watched. I think I watched Sunderland till I die. That was good, and the rest of them are a bit. Nah, 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 no, no, no. Because I, I just think it becomes a bit manufactured. I think you know. You'd, I'd be very surprised if you get a real sort of behind the scenes. But I mean, there's, there's. I look. You know, who am I to say? I'm no movie critic, but maybe people like them. But not for me. Like, if I, I love documentaries, but nah. Did you get one for you now? Nah. nah. <laughs> well, unless you want a cure for insomnia, mate, then you can <laughs> put it on late at night and just dream yourself away. Finish with John, please. I was going to ask you something similar because you said you didn't watch the something film. daft. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, I don't think that. I, I'd be very surprised if people... I mean, I, my sort of research on it was more on the individual players. So I might have watched individual players in that game, but I wouldn't have watched the game as a reference point because it's it's totally different. It's a you know, different set of circumstances, different manager, different... You don't under... Again, I, you know, I'm rare... You know, I'm really reticent to, to judge and, and try and figure out what somebody else is doing because I'm not in their shoes on a daily basis, so... I, I've, I've never used those kind of things. And also I know that irrespective of what's happened in the past, probably more than likely I'm, brought, I'm being brought in to do something differently. So, like I said, I mean, I, I, you know, I, I would have watched all the players individually through the whole season and got my research on the players I was inheriting, but there wasn't a lot for me to be gained by <clears throat> watching sort of matches and trying to get, again, some reference points as to how that's going to affect what I'm going to do. He's a superstar, mate. You're, you're right. I, 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 I look, I've, I've said it before. I think, I think he's world class. I think he could, you know, to do it as long as he has in in the Premier League. Um, as you said, uh, and, and this year, you know, he missed a fair few games with the Asian Cup, and that's happened a couple of times in his journey here. Um, Travelling to the other side of the world, representing his national team, never missing a beat there either, and and to keep producing those kind of numbers. Oh, I could, you know, I put him right up there, and and you know, again, I think there's still more to come from him in terms of, you know, I don't think I don't see him waning in terms of his abilities or his his physical capacity. So, you know, uh, if he can keep crunching out those numbers, I, look, I've got no doubt he'll go down as as one of the greats of the Premier League when he's done. Oh, maybe, yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe because of that, and and I think because of kind of his background playing for career. I think if he played for another national team, because again, I think whatever he does for his national team gets a little bit diminished because it's not a Euros or it's not you know it's not a World Cup qualifier where you know they can sort of measure up. But you know, I think if he was playing for any other national team, sort of in Europe or South America, and I've got no doubt he would play for whatever national team he happened to be um, of that nationality. I think that kind of maybe takes a little bit away from him as well because um, there's always kind of you, you put these reference points and invariably people put in sort of their international records as well to, to sort of rank them as players and I still think he's had an unbelievable international career as well, you know, um, carrying his nation for, for a very long time. But, but that's OK. I mean, I, I don't think... I think when it's all done and dusted, I think that his accomplishments and the manner in which he's gone about it, I think he'll he'll get the accolades he deserves. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.